It is a blessing of another brand new day to you out there and I want to welcome you to your favorite program. This is Sunday School, a program that has been designed to help us from one level of walk into another level of walk. And we know this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall all rejoice and be glad in it. And it's of the mercies of the Lord that the Lord has kept you and myself to witness this wonderful moment. We give all the praises, all the honor, all the adoration back unto him because he deserves our praise. And I'm your host for today, Amaki Kuniakela. And the topic I have before you on this day is dynamics of grace dynamics of grace this is so powerful a topic and we want to pray this morning according to our opening prayer we want to say almighty father please help me to remain in you and enjoy the grace of god throughout my life in the name of Jesus. Uh, let us begin to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Father, Lord, please help me to remain in you. Lord, help me to remain in you. Lord, help me to remain in you. In the name of Jesus, Lord, help me to remain in you. I enjoy the grace of God throughout my life in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, help me. 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 Lord, help me to remain in you. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining us on this wonderful broadcast. And I know today promises to be a wonderful time in God's presence as we will be exploring through the pages of the scriptures and also using our manual as a reference to what we're going to be discussing today. Dynamics of Grace. This is actually a two-part series that we're going to start today. We're going to deal with the first part. Dynamics of of grace dynamics of grace before we go into what grace is let me just start with the word dynamics dynamics talks about varying levels you know when you try to vary something or you look at the vastness of something you look at this is a dimension to this thing but when you alter one or two things or when you introduce another or external thing or the thing has innate properties within itself to be able to come up with different versions of itself not an adulterated one having laid that foundation I think it's going to be quite important that we do a couple of scriptures before we go into dynamics of grace, talking about levels of grace, uh, inherent properties that is in grace that we need to explore or we need to tap. Uh. You know, the ability of our God is, is not limited based on what we know. The ability of God can never be limited in its entirety. However, this now suggests to us, or this now speaks to us when we're looking at dynamics of grace, means that there are virgin dimensions of grace that we will not be able able to explore and by the pages of the scripture we we'll just look at one or two things because as much as we think we even know now trust me the bible says a little here a little there precept upon precept little by little the word of the lord came unto me it means that there are different dimensions or there are different levels to god there are depths in god that when it's only when god brings you into that experience or in that encounter that's when you see another dimension just like the 24 elders in heaven the bible says they rest not day or night they cast out their golden crown and anytime they lift up again they raise up their head they see another dimension of god that they've never seen before then they bow again saying holy holy lord god almighty so as much as we know that our god is a just god as much as we know that there are depths to god there are also dimensions to god as far as this grace is concerned we're just going to look at a bit of it and i know as 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 far as god is intentional about us other people will also come up with things that are scripturally based as to other dimensions of grace by the leading of the holy ghost we'll do a few scriptures then we we'll now go into what we have today the first one we're going to do is going to be according to first peter chapter 5 verse 10 exodus chapter 3 verse 13 first john 1 14 then we'll look at uh Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 8 to 9 to start with 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 10. The Bible says, But the God of all grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. Now let's go to the next one that's according to Exodus chapter 33 and verse 13. The Bible says, Now therefore I pray thee, if I found grace in thy sight, shew me thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. John chapter 1 and verse 14. John 1 14, the Bible says, uh, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Is what full of grace 
and that of truth. He is full of grace and truth. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 to 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 to 9. The Bible says, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me, and said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know God is going to help us. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. The Bible says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you now look at all the scriptures we've read, you will see that there are, there are dimensions to grace. As much as we've heard that grace is unmerited access, grace is unmerited favor, ah, yeah, yeah. is that true? Trust me, it's the truth. But if we now look at it based on the pages of the scripture, does that capture the entirety of what grace is? Does that capture the vastness of God? As far as God is intentional about us, as far as God is intentional about this thing that we speak about grace, the Bible says, but the God of all grace, the God of all grace means that Graces are in levels, graces are in categories, but it now depends on the one that is applicable to you or the one that is at work or in operation in your life. Say for example, Moses said, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me thy way. When a man wants to know the way of the Lord, when a man wants to walk in the details of the Lord, not based on the acts of God, a man can come into the place whereby that man will find grace with God and God brings that man into an experience, into an experience, into an experience that will begin to show that man this is the way of the Lord. When a man, when a man wants to come to the state of being perfect, is to, to be established, uh, to be strengthened, uh, to be settled in God. That can only come when the God of all grace comes into a place and that man has come into partnership with what God actually wants to do. Now see, the Bible says something about this grace we, we are talking about. You know, somebody said grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. We cannot discuss the subject of grace without bringing Christ into it. Because that grace, even to us, was actually assessed. We assessed that grace by Christ Jesus. If Christ Jesus was not in the scene, we would not be able to have access into this grace that we're talking about. The Bible says, and the word was made flesh, and the word dwelt among us. We beheld his glory as the glory of the Holy begotten, full of grace and that of truth. So this now means that the moment you see the person of Christ and you can capture the person of Christ based on your work with God, you are capturing all, all that is all about. That is to say, God, God, God revealing himself to humanity through the person of Christ. That is grace. The Bible says the word was made flesh. That is to say, Jesus Christ is full of grace. When you're looking at Jesus Christ, you're seeing the embodiment of grace. You are seeing all that is all about that is grace. There's also another dimension of grace. That grace is what that, 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 that Apostle Paul said that his grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient. What is that thing that you found yourself in? The grace of God is sufficient, is able to take you out. Now, if we now say all of those things as to what grace is her, now let's look at something. And I'm just going to give us one or two things. Grace is the supernatural ability to do exploits. You want to do exploits, come into an experience with grace. Uh, there is also another dimension of grace that talks about the divinity of God expressed uh, through what? Through humanity. God wants to express himself uh, and God has to use this memotals as an expression of himself to this world. That is also grace that is made available to that person so that that person can be a representative of Christ. Uh, now look at this. You will see some people into prayer, some people into healing, some people into deliverance, some people into all sex of all these things. All these things cannot be separated away from Christ. Everything is in God. Everything is in one. But trust me, graces are given to people. Graces are given to individuals for them to be able to explore that dimension. However, God is not limiting those things to those people. If you can walk the walk and you can do the journey with God, God can make you an expression of that grace. And this is going to bring us to two dimensions of grace. As much as we are talking about grace, the first dimension to grace is what? Is the saving grace. 
Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 to 9. It is by grace that you are saved. It is by grace that I am saved. Not of myself. It is the gift of God. So we can say that your salvation that we are talking about uh, as a result of grace, uh, because of the faith you have in God, it is a gift of God unto you because we do not merit it in the first place. Uh, but the Bible is now saying to us uh, that salvation that we are talking about, that is as a result of grace that is released unto you, that it is not based on your own work, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, so that you will not boast. It is the gift of God. That talks about the, what? The saving grace. Uh, and this saving grace is one of also another thing that you can see. Talking about the finished work of Christ on Calvary. The finished works of Christ on Calvary. Talking about the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. So that we can be redeemed. So that we can be brought back. And this now talks about your own firm belief in God. This grace is impacted on believers. Uh, the moment you, 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 you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this grace is received. That talks about the finished works of Christ. This is the display of the love of the Father. This is the display of the love of the Father. This is the display of the love of the Father through the, 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 the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. God's riches at was at Christ's expense because Jesus Christ was the one who paid the sacrifice for yourself and myself and there is another thing uh, yeah, 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 that talks about the enabling grace uh, this is the grace that comes into the life of a person and sets that man upon his feet this is the grace that energizes us this is the grace that gives us ability to be able to do exploit uh, it is not based on the strength of the flesh uh, it is not based on the strength of the hammer uh, yeah, yeah, this is the grace that enables you that gives you capacity uh, yeah, yeah. you know grace talks about God's ability in my own inner abilities provided for me divine capabilities ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. it talks about my own inabilities but God's ability comes and rests on my own inabilities and this now provides for me the divine capabilities I am strengthened this is enabling grace this grace only comes when you partner with God, when you partner with the Holy Spirit, then it now gives you that leverage, it puts you at a, at a, at a vantage position for you to be able to ride. So what this now means unto us that if you also want to, to get to know more, if you also want to press deeper into God so that you can understand this grace, it means that you need to press into deeper dimensions and God will be able to reveal various dimensions of grace unto us. I may not be able to, to blow up a bit on, on the grace. You know, there's something also that is so important. Grace talks about the vastness of God's power. Mm -hmm. His blessings. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the grace that we're talking about is not just for you, for, for, for somebody to be redeemed from the consequences of the law. There is that part. That is the saving grace. But what about the enabling grace? The vastness of the power of God that can be made available unto you is blessings. Everything, let's just put it this way, everything that makes God, God. Everything that is all about God at work in your life, that is grace impacted unto you. It is the riches of the bank of heaven that God has made available unto us. And I pray God is going to help us in the name of Jesus. God is going to help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, our memory verse for today is taken from Titus chapter 2 verse 11. The Bible says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. This hath appeared unto all men. This talks about the saving grace. The, the grace of God that bringeth salvation. There is a dimension of the grace of God. And what it does is to reconcile back, men back unto us unto God. You know, Jesus Christ was brought into this world that he might save men from their sins. Huh? And Jesus Christ, the Bible says, he is full of grace huh? and that of truth. Huh? When you see Jesus Christ, you see the whole embodiment of grace. Huh? You see everything that has to do with grace, uh, God. Huh? That is it, in operation in this cosmos. And the Bible is saying to us that the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared unto all men. That talks about the revelation of Jesus Christ. Huh? The revelation of Jesus Christ that has been made uh, man Manifest unto us so that we can come into that experience, so that men can be brought back, so that men can return back unto God. The grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared unto all men. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our introduction today says the word translated grace in Hebrew is chen, which means to bend or to stoop in kindness to another 
as a superior to an inferior. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we see what the Bible is saying to us or what our introduction is saying. It means that when you try to reach out to somebody that does not have the capacity to be able to help himself up high, when you reach out to somebody that is low there, that is grace at work. That is grace at work. We cannot save ourselves. Our blood is not even potent enough to save us. Our blood is not even potent enough to wash away the sins of the whole world. But God had to use the substitutionary sacrifice or the sacrifice of Jesus Christ in the place of what? In the place of the redeeming grace and is made available to us to bring us back. And that's what it's saying. It's when a superior stoops to help that person up. That is a dimension of grace. That is a dimension of grace. The Greek word here is charis and it connotes something beyond the ordinary cause of what can be expected and therefore commendable. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10. When used in reference to God, it is the benevolent action uh, yeah, 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 of him stooping down to us in kindness to reach us in our needs and convey upon us a benefit. His grace has been termed unmerited favor. You do not qualify for it. I do not qualify for it. But this is just God saying, uh, for these people, I'm going to make this a possibility unto you. I'm going to make this possible unto you. I'm going to make this possible unto you. God's riches at Christ's expense. There is the redemption side of grace. That is the one that brings us back unto God. That's the saving grace. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. His grace has been turned on merited favor, but it is more than an attitude of favor or that of mercy. Dynamics of grace. Uh, dynamics of grace. Dynamics of grace. It is more than we say favor with God. It is more than we say mercy. It is more than all of those things. And that's the reason why we need to press further into God so that God can open our eyes to see what grace is. The Bible says Jesus Christ is full of grace and truth. Jesus Christ is full of grace and truth. It means that if we can have an experience or a walk with God, we begin to see virgin dimensions of grace. And don't forget, grace is not a license to sin. Uh, yeah, yeah, God is going to help us in Jesus' name. Let's go on to our first break. We'll be right back with more for you. Still on our topic today, Dynamics of Grace. Don't go anywhere. God bless you. Welcome back from that break. And if you're just joining us, you're tuning into Sunday School on our topic today. Dynamics of Grace, part one. And uh, this is the time we go into our lesson outlines. We have two lesson outlines. The first one is understanding grace. And the second one is how to receive grace. But before we go into that, let's just quickly go into a Bible passage for today. A Bible passage will be taken from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 to 8. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 to 8. The Bible says, But God who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ by grace ye are saved and has raised us up together and made us to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus for by grace are ye saved through faith and not of yourself it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had ordained uh, yeah, 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 that we should walk in him and may the Lord bless the reading of his word in the name of Jesus so we can see the mercy of God in operation here it is also the mercy of God that, that, that the Bible makes us to understand the love of God wherewith God loved us to the end that men should not die that we should not be dead in our sins however God has to make a plan the Bible says the Lamb of God that was slain right from the foundations of the world God had to because of his mercy at play so we can see that mercy is a dimension of grace. Uh, favor is a dimension of grace. But all, all in its entirety is not limited to that alone. And the Bible says that it is by grace that we are saved. So if grace is taken out of the sin, uh, trust me, salvation is not going to make a possibility unto us. More what makes salvation a possibility unto us is because of the grace that is available. The grace of God in the place of the mercy of God that God has made a possibility unto us. And it says something that he has raised us up together 
and we are seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is only achieved by Jesus Christ. So when we're talking about grace, there's no way we talk about grace that it's not going to be Christocentric, that it's not going to be centered around Christ because in all that we do, Jesus Christ must be revealed because Jesus Christ is the one that has come to show us the way unto the Father. So it has to be centered around Christ. Everything that is not of Christ should not be mentioned in our camp. So it's highly important. It is by grace that we are saved. Through faith, not of yourselves. It is not of me. It is the gift of God. You know, when you talk about gift, gift is, is, is not what you've worked for. Gift is not what you work for. It is somebody showing his compassionateness. It is somebody showing his mercy. Or maybe as a result of the favor of God upon your life. And that's when somebody will see and will say, I want to gift this unto you. Not because you've worked for that person. Not because you've done something extraordinarily. We've seen people that they've not met that person. They've not met their entire life. And they met the person the first time. I said, I want to give this gift unto you. Ah, yeah, yeah. It is not because of you. But it's just that the person has come into the place of compassionateness and wants to extend such unto you, wants to extend such a benevolence. And that is one thing about grace. Grace is not by your own works or by my own work. It is at the benevolence of God to the recipient so that the, the recipient will now become an example or a partaker of the grace of God that is made available through what? Through the sacrifice or the substitutionary sacrifice of who? Of Jesus Christ. So grace is also something that we can talk about the benevolence of God that is made available unto us as immune species in this cosmos to the end that will be saved not only saved that will be blessed that will capture all that is of God through what through the Lord Jesus Christ and his substitutionary sacrifice or his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. That is what grace is, that we can capture everything about God. And how do you capture everything about God? It can only be captured when we press into God. When we press into God, Apostle Paul said something that is so important. He said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but there is one thing that I do, forgetting the things that are behind, reaching forth unto things uh, that are ahead of me. There are some things that I've been able to achieve in time past, uh, but trust me, there are deeper dimensions to God. Uh, there are levels in God, uh, and it only takes a man of understanding. It only takes a man that wants to get into the deep things of God, into deeper dimensions unto God, uh, deep call it unto the deep. So the only thing we do is we keep pressing, and the more we pray, Pressure. The more we see the grace of God, the more we press. We see the grace of God. We press into deeper dimensions of God. And God will say, come into an experience. There is something about this great God that will so serve. When God sees your anger, God will withdraw some certain things from you. Not because he does not want to show you all those things, but he wants to check, he wants to check, he wants to check. He wants to check your level of desperation for you coming into that experience. And that's the reason why it looks like God is hiding the secret. God is not hiding the secret. The intent and the original plan of God is that God wants to bring his people unto himself. But trust me, there are levels with walk with God. Even Jesus Christ with the 12 disciples they are, they are the 12 disciples they are the multitude they are this they are that they are the 12 they are the three and there is another that one that you need to press the part you press the part press the part this talks about dynamics of grace when we press the part God is going to reveal to us in the name of Jesus Christ now what is grace what is grace grace is God's favor towards on the unworthy or is benevolence on the undeserving we do not deserve it in the first place we do not deserve it for all have sin and have come short of the glory of God. We do not deserve it. But this is Christ, Christ's benevolence or God's benevolence to the undeserving nation or to the undeserving people. Another thing about grace is this. Grace is God's favor translated into action that releases the enabling power into our lives. What grace does is that it releases, it releases something. It releases power. It's that thing. What you're looking for, all you need is the grace of God to be made available unto you. That is when you press into deeper dimensions. Huh? There is the enabling power of God that a man can receive. And this comes in the place of what? In the place 
where grace is made available. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10. 1 Corinthians 15 and the Bible says, But by grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was upon me. There is also another dimension of grace to God that gives you the ability to be able to labor in the things of God. There is another dimension of grace. is that gives you the enablement uh, that energizes your spirit, soul, and body that brings you into the place where you are fired for God uh, so that you can do services. And this thing it talks about the grace of God, uh, the favor of God translated into action that releases. There is something it does, it releases something, and that thing is called enabling power. This talks about dynamite, dynamo, that is made available. This comes in the place of grace that is made available. The third one we're going to look at, what is grace or understanding grace? Grace is God's gift of salvation for mankind. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, like we said. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. This is so important. This talks about the saving grace. The Bible says it is not of your works. It says for by grace are ye saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any you cannot boast. It's saying that this thing, this thing that we are talking about, it is by the grace of God that you are saved. Through faith. Faith in the finished works of Calvary. It is not of yourself. It has nothing in its entirety to do with me. It has nothing to do with me because I am the recipient. However, it says it is the gift of God. God is the one gifting it to us. Not because I have done something to deserve it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is not of my own works. What would my works do? The works of men are dead. It is only when we partner with God that God makes the works of our hands to be alive. Because everything that has to do with this cosmos, uh, yeah, yeah, there is a deviation from the pattern and the ordinances of God. Even right from the foundation of the world. Uh, when Adam actually fell from the place of grace. So it's no man should boast. So we are recipients. We are recipients of what? Of this dimension of grace. Now, the enabling power of God for service. You want to be energized for service unto God. All you need is what? Is what? Is grace. Now, the Bible says something in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 7 to 8. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 7 to 8. The Bible says, Wherefore I was made a minister according to the gift of grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power unto me who am less than the least of all the saints. Is this grace given? that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. So we see another thing. We are made a minister according to the gift of grace. When grace is impacted on you, grace gives you the ability to. Grace enables you. Grace gives you all that you need to do. As far as the program of God is concerned in this cosmos, as far as the kingdom of God is concerned, there is a dimension of grace that when it comes upon you, it sets you upon your feet. Just like what the Bible says in Abaco chapter 2 and verse 1, I will stand upon my watch. There is a dimension of grace uh, that energizes a man, that gives that man that strength and that boldness to be able to stand in the office of a minister, to do the work of the ministry in an effectual dynamic way that is to say producing results. It says, I am the least. And that's one thing about God. God will look and look at the least place. A place where people do not want to reckon with other people. And God can decide to say, I want to bring somebody out from this person. And I want to make it a voice in this generation. And people will say, who is your father? Who is your mother? We've not even heard of this. We don't even know you. That is grace that is made available to such a person. And it energizes. There is an enabling power that gives you the capacity to do. You know, the Bible says, and ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That is also another dimension of grace that rests upon a man. When the Holy Ghost is descended, huh? you you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost is descended upon you. That is a dimension of grace that is impacted, that is released. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Grace is the virtue which believers must manifest. If you want to manifest any virtue, trust me, grace. Trust me, grace. Trust me, grace. Grace is the benediction which believers should enjoy in Christ. There is a benediction 
that believers should enjoy in Christ. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 24. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 24. The Bible says, Grace be with all them that love our Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. The benediction is the conclusion of the matter. That is where we wrap up the curtain. And it says something, Grace, what? Is the benediction which believers should enjoy in Christ. You see, when we're talking about the conclusion of everything that you need to enjoy in Christ, as far as we are concerned, as far as we are concerned, everything that you need to enjoy in Christ, everything summed up, encapsulated, covered, capital, everything you want to say, grace. Mm. Grace is the divine help which believers receive in the time of need. In the time of need. You see, dynamics of grace. Grace is more than all that we've said about grace. Trust me. The Bible says something in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We can see the majority of the things we were mentioning here has to do with Christ. So we say grace is what is divine help which believers receive in the time of need. In the time of need, all you need is impacted grace. You need that grace to be made available unto you because it is that grace that turns things around. It is the grace of God that is available on your life that helps you turn things around, helps you to manipulate things around because you begin to see the hand of God in all that you do. That is grace at work. That is grace at work. People will say, I don't know this person. I have not seen something in this fashion before. But there is grace that is available that makes things work out for you. That opens the door for you. Even in the place that you've never been before. People will say, if there is someone that needs to crack something for us, if there is somebody that needs to break protocol for us, I know that brother. I don't know what is resting upon his life. But anywhere he gets to, he has a voice. People listen to him. People hear what he has to say. That is grace. That is grace. That is grace. That is the grace of God that is available in your life. It is the divine help which believers receive in the time of need. Grace is the divine ability to do exploit. You want to do exploit in life. It is grace. The Bible says, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall live corrupt by flatteries. But they that know their God, they shall be stronger and they do exploit. Daniel 11 32. And they that know their God, they shall be stronger and they will do exploit. If you know your God, strength is made available unto you. Strength is made available unto you not only straight but you begin to do exploit you begin to do exploit you surpass what people are saying the your ability to be able to do exploit and to receive strength strength in time of need strength to make you to ride above the clouds it's only in the place of your understanding of who god is not based on what i have heard but this talks about a revelation and a relational walk with god i have an experience with god i have a covenant with god i am in partnership with God. Grace is the appearance of kindness and the love of God our Savior. Towards what? Towards man. Grace is the appearance of kindness and the love of God. You see, an appearance taking a bodily form according to what the Bible says in John chapter 1. You know, I read John chapter 1. John chapter 1 verse 14 that says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. So grace is the appearance of kindness and the love of God and that of our Savior. You remember what the Bible says in Exodus chapter 53. It says, if I found grace in thy sight, show me thy glory. You know what the Bible says? And God said unto you, no man shall see me and leave, but there is something I'm going to do. I will make my kindness to pass before you. That is the revelation of Jesus Christ. He says, I will make my goodness, my kindness to pass before you. And this is saying grace is the appearance of kindness. Kindness has two legs to walk. Huh? Kindness has two legs to walk. Perhaps you want to look at what that kindness is. That kindness talks about Jesus Christ. Huh? That talks about the, the, the Godhead bodily dwelling in Christ huh? that has made available grace unto us for us to be able to do exploits. The love of God, our Savior, towards men. I know God is going to help us in the name of Jesus Christ. So we want to look at some significant differences between law, that is to say the Old Testament and that of grace. Ah, God is going to help us. I, I, I got some things here and I'm just going to read some of all these things unto us. Hey, this one says, the law blessed the good in the Old Testament, but grace saves the bad. 
So the law is about the good. But grace comes and says, you bad, come. I am going to make something available unto you. The law accuses and convicts the offenders in the Old Testament, but grace cancels the bone and releases the debtor. Now we want to look at this. The law says I am condemned, but grace says I am found. The law says I should die, but grace says I would live. The law blesses the good, but grace saves the bad. The law accuses and convicts the offenders, but grace cancels the bond and releases the debtor. The law causes, but grace redeems from that of the cause. Law shuts every mouth before God, but grace opens the mouth to praise in an adoration unto God. The law puts a great and guilty distance between man and God. Grace makes guilty man nigher unto God. The law says it is an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Grace says resist not the evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn the other side. The law says hate thy enemy. Grace says love your enemies and then that despisefully despise you. Lord never has a missionary, but grace has sent people to the hands of the earth to go and preach the gospel. The law utters condemnation to the best of 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 the man. But grace says you are freely justified. Even the worst of the sinners, grace has come unto you. Have you forgotten the man by the side of Jesus Christ when he was nailed on the cross? Even at the dying time, grace sought for him. Grace is going to find you today. Grace is going to find you today and is going to justify you just as if you've never sinned before. Grace, grace, oh God, grace. The law is a system of probation, but grace is that of favor. The law stones the adulteress, but grace says something. You are not committed any sin before. Cast the first stones. Neither have I condemned thee. Where are your condemnators? Where are them that have condemned thee? He said, Lord, I find them no more. Jesus Christ said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Grace does not condemn, but the law condemns. Grace brings back life. Grace brings back assurance. Grace brings back hope. Grace brings back all the possibilities of God that are locked in the heavenlies, but the law condemns. The law puts you down. The law judges you. The law condemns you. The law does all that it does, all that it does to kill the spirit, the soul, and that of man. But grace has come to revitalize us. Grace has come to give us hope. Grace has come to say, you're not going to die in your sins. For this cause was the Son of God made manifest. For this cause was the Son of God made manifest. For this cause was the Son of God made manifest that he might destroy the works Esquatabala. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Let's continue on to this break. We'll be right back with more for you. Still on our topic today, dynamics of grace. Don't go anywhere. God bless you. Welcome back from that break. And if you're just joining us, you're tuning into Sunday School on our topic today, Dynamics of Grace. And if you're just joining us, you're tuning into Sunday School. And this is the time of the program where we we'll go into our second outline. Our second outline is how to receive grace. It is not just important for us to talk about grace, but how do we receive grace? The first one, the way we receive grace is by accepting God's love towards all men. That is the starting point. The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So we understand something that by accepting God's love towards all men, how do you want to enjoy love if you cannot receive love? Or how do you, how do you want to, to feel what love is all about if you've not opened yourself up to receive love? So many people will say, I, I, nobody loves me, but have you come into the place where you're ready to receive love? love you have to come into that place whereby you what you'll be able to receive love it says by accepting god's love you need to accept it god has made it available however your own assignment is for you to do what to receive the love of god by believing in the lord jesus christ by believing in the lord jesus christ the bible says something in romans chapter 10 verse 9 to 10 romans chapter 10 verse 9 to 10 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto what? Unto salvation. So you need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ through God's mercy and the fellowship with the Holy Ghost. You need to do what you need to believe 
Believing is very important for you to do what? To receive grace. If you do not believe in the finished works of Calvary, trust me, it's not going to be a possibility unto you. Just like that childhood attitude or like that child look act. Just go there. You know, at times people will say, what are these people that are called Christians doing? They cannot understand because these things are spiritual. A natural man cannot understand, neither can they understand it because they are spiritually discerned. You cannot know them. So that's also another thing. By exercising our faith, no matter how little at all time, if you have faith as small as a grain of a mustard seed, if you have faith as what? That of a mustard seed, the littlest, the littlest, the littlest that you can have. And I pray God is going to help us. By being humble before God, by being humble before God, you know what the Bible says about humility? Humility is very key. Is very key. The Bible in James chapter 4, verse 6. James chapter 4, verse 6. The Bible says, But it giveth more grace. Wherefore he said, God resists the proud, but it giveth grace to the humble. You want to receive grace. Humility is also the key. Humility is, is uh, your journey, your journey to be to, to receiving grace. If you're not humble, you will not be able to receive grace. Humility is key. You want to receive grace. But God resists the proud. God resists the proud. God does what God resists the proud. Even for Peter chapter 5, verse 5. The latter part even says, For God is the proud but it gives a grace to the humble god is the one that gives grace to the humble if a man is humble trust me grace will be multiplied you know the bible says grow in grace grow in grace one of the ways in which you grow in grace is by being humble having a teachable spirit it is not about you or whatsoever you have your or your accolades or your achievements in life it has nothing to do with that the next one is by loving the lord jesus christ with all your heart you need to love jesus christ with all your heart the Bible in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 24 says, Grace be unto them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. I love God not based on words of mouth. I love God from the bottom of my heart. Even if the world is against me. Even if people are saying whatsoever, I do not care. But my love for God is sincerity. Not based on the things that I get. You know one of the challenges we have in this world is that relationships these days are transactional. It is what I get in return to what you get. It is not about people coming into a place of genuineness. If it is about that, trust me, even Jesus Christ will not die for us because he died for us when we were nothing. So it is not because we have something that he died for us, not because of what he wants to get from us, but he did it for us. And that talks about the loving, the loving father or the compassionateness of the loving father that is made available unto us through the sufferings and trials arranged for us by God. The Bible says, and this we know that all things work together for them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Whatsoever you're going through, trust me, trust me, grace is available. Grace is available unto you. Through the prophetic words of prayer contained in the Bible or spoken to us by spiritual heads and fellow believers in Christ. How to receive grace? You can receive grace through the prayers that are contained in the word of god and this is just just an eye opener unto us that there are dimensions to grace uh, there are dynamics to grace are, are we ready to press in deeper are we ready to press in deeper are we ready to press in deeper to deep, deep, deeper dimensions of god god is going to help us our summary today says the almighty god gives grace for those who fulfill certain conditions Conclusion, grace is the spring and source of all benefits received from God. Romans chapter 11 verse 6. God's grace should not be taken for granted. A, 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 grace is not a license to sin. If we do not reiterate this, like I said before, grace is not what a license to sin. What shall we say then? Shall we continue saying that grace may abound? This is not possible. Shall we continue saying that grace may abound? The Bible says, God forbid. How shall we that we are dead to sin live any longer in it? Romans chapter 6 verse 1 to 2. Shall we continue saying that grace may abound? These are two ends that we never meet. When a man continues in sin, grace ceases or grace stops. But if you want to grow in grace, you need to subject the flesh. You need to keep sin away from your cup. Perhaps you're out there, you want to rededicate your life or you want to give your life to Jesus Christ and say, Lord, I need this grace that is in operation. You want to say after me, Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for such a time as this. 
I give you all the praise. I give you honor. I want to thank you for your word that has come expressly to me today. Lord, I know that I am a sinner. I acknowledge my sins. I come before you on this day. Lord, please forgive me all of my sins in the name of Jesus. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life in the name of Jesus. And I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. From now as for Lord, release on me the power to go and sin no more. The power to go and sin no more. Lord, release on me in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen in the name of Jesus. Perhaps you said that prayer, you're saved. All you need to do is find the Bible believing church and you say to the pastor that I just gave my life to Jesus Christ. They will help you as to how you will grow and they will be intentional about your growth from where you are now into the next level. And I know God is going to partner with you in the name of Jesus. The grace of God will be made available unto you in the name of Jesus. And I want to say thank you for all that you do. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for the comment. Thank you for the source Thank you for even reaching out. Ah, yeah, yeah, this means a whole lot. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We cannot say thank you, but enough. But we want to say from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for all that you do. I pray for you today. The lines will fall on you in pleasant places. You will never know a better yesterday. Higher and higher you will go in the name of Jesus. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all your offerings and accept thy bond sacrifices. Grant thee according to thy own heart and fulfill thy counsel. You will rejoice in thy salvation and the name of our God will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill thy petition in the name of Jesus. It is well with you when you go out in the name of Jesus. It is well with you when you come in in the name of Jesus. The fruit of your body is blessed in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever you lay your hands on will prosper in the name of Jesus. Thank you for joining us. Till I see you next time, keep the fire burning. God bless you, sir.